Hello, hello. I am back to help you do this thing called life. So, I have been praying for you, and I hope that you keep praying for me. Um, we've been experiencing some beautiful weather, so I've just been trying to get out to take advantage of it. And um, I'm just trying to learn to live. You know, um, there are so many things right here in our area, so many beautiful things that I have never even taken advantage of right here that God has placed in our area that they're just beautiful sights that I have never gotten close enough to take in. And so each day I'm trying to do a little more to see what it has to offer. Um, so many times we talk about wanting to be somewhere else or wanting to do something else when we actually haven't taken advantage of what's right here in front of us. So anyway, um, you know, when I look back at yesterday's video, um, I had a lot going on yesterday evening, issues with the phone, stuff like that. Um, nothing big, but just enough to be a distraction. And later last night when I thought about it, I said, well, you know, I really don't know if I actually entitled it correctly. You know, I said, keep the dirt, but I don't know if I said enough to let you really know exactly what I was talking about. So I kind of want to revisit that topic again today. Um, because when I'm talking about keeping the dirt, and I took notes so that I wouldn't get too thrown off this time. Um, but keep the dirt because it's needed to grow. It is your experience. You know, I talked about how sometimes we are um, comparing our seed to someone else's harvest. Um, but a lot of times what we miss is that the dirt is what actually brings about the harvest. Um, some of the tastiest vegetables and fruits had some real good fertilizer on them. Um, they were once packed and covered with mess. Uh, I know at our church, they had done a little, uh, they did a little um, garden over on, on what used to be a playground. And our men did a garden back there. And I remember driving up one day and was like, oh my gosh, what is that smell? It's happened a couple of times. I was like, what in the world is that smell? And then realized or was told that it was the garden. And as disgusting as it smelled, and that was from a distance. I can't imagine having been the ones standing in it with my hands in it. Um, but I was afforded the opportunity to taste a little bit of what came out of the garden. And it was delicious. But so many times we look at the end result and we forget everything that it took to get that product. Same thing um, with us. We want to get rid of the dirty, stinky part of our process and we just want to go straight to good. And the thing is, your success may be what makes someone celebrate you or admire you. But talking to them about your mess is what is going to enable them to um, connect with you, to be able to relate to you, um, and to be able to give them hope. And so while I'm not saying that you got to go out here and air all your dirty laundry, I do believe that there should come a point in time where you have experienced deliverance or where you have experienced um, healing and you can go back and talk about it because we can admire you and look up to you and all those other things but what makes me I mean and it, it does it gives me something to look forward to however what even makes me be able to believe that it can happen for me is knowing some of the adversities that you've overcome, knowing some of the things that you've been able to walk through and work through. Um, 
And so I just, it gets back to being your authentic self. I just, and I, like I said, y'all, I know God is talking to me about me. Um, but I believe he's also talking to me about you because I believe that it is a universal truth. I don't think that it's just something that God is talking to me about. I believe that this is a truth, especially for the people of God who want to be used by him. Um, what you've been through is what anoints you. It is the thing that validates you. It's the thing that stamps up. Well, God has already approved you. But you need to know that what you've been through does not disqualify you. It's actually the thing that's used to qualify you. And so, all in all, what I'm saying is, y'all, just be yourself. Be yourself. And whoever is drawn to you will be able to relate to you. Um, don't worry about all the people that aren't drawn. All the people that don't come closer. Your language, who you are, may not be for them um somebody else may be for them but you got to know your tribe know your crew speak your truth and whoever your voice is like a magnet and whoever is supposed to come closer to you learn from you glean from you they will and in living out your truth and being your real self um, you will free somebody else to be all that they're supposed to be. Well, this has been One Moment with Marcy. I'll be back tomorrow with another moment of momentum producing motivation. Until then, stay encouraged. And remember, you got to flutter before you can fly. But flying is in your future. I love y'all.